a sound check. One, two, three. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? All right. How do I sound, Reggie? Eight. All right, you guys can hear me? Good. I may get pulled over by this cop, so hold on here. Let me see. This cop was checking me out. Anyway, guys, I'm here at the hospital here. I had to take my dad in here for some stuff here. This is what I do. This is what the crazy guy do. But anyway, you guys saw the message. It's true. I am crazy. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, I'm going to have somebody put in the, um, in the description of, of um, this, the uh, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, uh, I believe it came from the Green Bay Gazette, um, but on their Facebook, you can go on the Facebook, you can see all the comments of these people, and it's, 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 it's hilarious, I mean, they, these people don't even know me, I, I think I understand what Pastor says, that uh, I may have, en I, I have enemies, but I don't have any enemies, I have enemies, but I do not have enemies. So there's people out there that, that sees me as their enemy. But I don't have any enemies. They hate me and I don't even know the people that hate me. They hate me without cause. Um, but the word on the street is I'm crazy. Um, I got CTE. Um, I've been, I have brain damage. Um, I've been hit in the head too many times. This is a new one that I'm a, crock, a crackpot. I, I, I know Pastor Dow used to say it a lot. That they used to say he's a crack pot, and I thought like a pot or something. They've been talking about like I smoke crack. And um, I was watching this video, and I'll put this on the link too. This is a this video of Magic Johnson and the Lakers back in the heydays. This is guy that did the research, and he said that um, uh, Magic Johnson and the Lakers back in the days in the 80s. I mean, yeah, he was a, a big time player and everything. And I don't have any issue with Magic Johnson. I'm just I, I personally don't have any issues with Magic Johnson, but. I guess the guy calculated that back in the days, there was a teammate there that said that Magic Johnson on the low end probably slept with over 2,000 women and the, and the owner at the time, but 2,000 women on the low end, on the high end, per year, per year. And on the high end, it could have uh, easily went up to 5,000 a year. And he, is, and, and he, he contracted the HIV virus. He catch, I think he caught the HIV virus and he's still married to the same woman. I think her name is Cookie Kelly. Cookie Johnson now, and she's still married. And I'm thinking to myself, in the 16 years that I was married to my first wife, or the the, uh, the one that uh, just left me, Eileen, I was married to her for 16 years. Played professional football in the NFL. Never been with any other woman except for her during those years. Never. I, everybody knew me as a family man. Didn't go to, to no parties. Did not hang out. Never did drugs. Never did any of that stuff and i'm thinking to myself my my ex-wife left me because i kept the shabbat because i wanted to keep the sabbath day holy that was my crime i decided to keep the sabbath day holy i decided to keep to do what the bible says to do i i decided to follow the example of yeshua hamashiach i decided to find paul i decided to follow david abraham isaac jacob moshe that was my crime Never been with a lot of women. Only had only was a one woman had eight eight a seed with her, seven boys and one girl, and and he left me. And then I'm looking at Maggie Johnson. Maggie Johnson was over two thousand women per year, on the low end. That's just bare minimum. On the low end, they had parties. People showed up in L.A. crazy, and his wife is still with him. And I think one of his sons is gay. Was, and, and, and he's not crazy at all. But he was with 2,000 women per year. That's 365 days in a year. And Magic Johnson slept with over 2,000 women per year. Man, I think when they say nice guys finish last, it's true. <laughs> nice guy finish last. And he's still with his current wife, Cookie. And I think he's like the owner of a team. He's well respected in the community. I guess when you sell your soul to the devil, 
You don't have anybody calling you crazy. And he caught, he contracted HIV. And they were doing drugs. You guys can watch the video. I'm going to put it down below. But <clears throat> I wanted to get on here and says, guys, it's true. I am crazy. I am crazy for Jesus. I'm crazy for Yeshua Hamashiach. I am crazy. There is no doubt about it. I am a fanatic when it comes to my master, my king, my savior. I am crazy about Jesus. Some of you guys are crazy about your children. You call them children, your sons, your daughters. Some of you are crazy about the Packers or your, your favorite football team. Right now you got teams in the playoff. You got people all over the United States of America watching football games because they're crazy about their team. You may be crazy about your country. You may be crazy about your mama, your daddy. You may be crazy about your high school. You may be crazy about your college team. Well, I'm crazy too. I'm crazy about Jesus. Jesus. So anyway, I was just thinking to myself, I was thinking like, man, I was thinking about Magic Johnson's situation. Like I never, never got caught up in the party scenes. Never got caught up in the party scenes. Never. Never did drugs. I thought I did drugs. I talked to my brother, David. I said, man, I did drugs too. He said, what'd you do? I smoked a roach. And he was like, kind of like waiting for the punchline. Like, uh, bro, you, you, you didn't do drugs. Um, I mean, that literally, ask, ask Brother David. It, it, literally, it, he, I mean, I did that in college. I mean, he literally messed up my whole world. Messed up my world. I thought I could relate on some level. He says, mm -mm. so guys, I haven't even done drugs. And my wife of 16 years left me because I wanted to keep the Sabbath day holy. But I am crazy. But this is what I wanted to tell you. I was thinking to myself, it's kind of cool what's happening right now. When I used to play for the Green Bay Packers, I genuinely, genuinely, like when I had good games, I was already looking. I knew they had to talk to me. I had two sacks, three sacks, one sack. Many tackles, cost fumbles, change the game. I knew the media had to talk to me. I knew they're going to have to talk to me. And I always try to look for an opportunity to talk about Jesus back then. This is when I was a Christian. Go look up any of my articles. I always found a way to interweave, interweave, uh, interweave Jesus in the conversation. It's like, what does Jesus have to do with football? I said, now, if you don't want me talking about Jesus, ask me a technical question. What move did you use? Then I will tell you. But if you explain, how do you explain how you were able to make that play and the way it happened? And I, I, you just walked right into it. I always try to find a way to talk about Jesus. Even in my Look up all my old interviews. Go Google my name. Look up the old thing. You will always associate with me with Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. Now, I, I didn't know at the time it was Yeshua, but you guys know what I'm saying. But so it's always been my heart. I've always been. Now I've just learned how to love him. I've learned to how to truly love him. I didn't realize in John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And now I'm thinking about all those times I had all these games trying to get Jesus on the map. Monday night football. Anytime I, mean, I always somehow try to inter, interweave Jesus into the conversation. Always try to talk about my faith. Always, always, always. Look it up. You, you, you can't help but to say, man, Kabir, everybody knew what I was known for. So what's changed? Nothing has changed except I'm keeping the commandments of Yah. That's what's changed. It's really been about Jesus and no longer about happy wife, happy life. It's been about happy, happy Jesus, happy life. Not, and not necessarily it's going to be a happy life because you can, you, you'll can you suffer persecution. But here's what I wanted to tell you. It's interesting. In my playing days, I played nine years for the Green Bay Packers. And not too many people probably knew about how passionate I was about Jesus. And now you got 2019. You got USA Today, New York Times, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Green Bay Gazette. All over the United States. I got people from England, United Kingdom. I got people from L.A., East Coast, all over the United States. People are hearing about KGB. They're hearing about Brother Kabir. They're hearing about him being part of a cult. They're hearing about uh, Straightway Truth Ministry. They're hearing about all of this going on, being arrested. I have never in all my playing years has ever got this type of media attention about what I believe. Never. And I played for the Green Bay Packers. 
Now it's because I play for the Green Bay Packers it makes news. And then you get you got arrest and guns and all this stuff. And you bring all of this together. And now I get to talk about my faith. And now everybody's like, say, what does Kabir believe? What's so different than what he used to believe? What changed? Well, here's what changed. I now keep the commandments of Yah. I don't go to church on Sundays. I now do. I meet in the assembly on Sabbath day. Friday evening to Saturday evening. That to Saturday evening. That's what's changed. I don't do Christmas and Easter anymore. Now I keep all seven feasts. Keep the feast of uh, Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles, and all in between. A Day of Atonement. The uh, the the uh, the Feast of Trumpets. You got first fruits. You got the um, first fruits, and you got unleavened bread. That's what changed. I start doing what the Bible talked about. And you know what was so crazy? I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I did what everybody was saying on that comment, go look at, guys, go look. I'm going to put the, the, all these articles. Go look at these Facebook and look at all the comments that people are saying. I'm crazy. CTE, crockpot, crackpot, crackpot. Crack, nah, I, I've seen it in the movies, never been around. My lips may be dry right now. You guys may think I've been smoking some crack now. <laughs> you know, but this is off the chain, off the chain. I mean, I'm being called all types of names. And now people are hearing about my faith. And I'm thinking to myself, if I did what these people are saying on these comments, you won't even hear about me. You wouldn't hear about by Yeshua Hamashiach. I wouldn't affect change. I wouldn't be inspiring people. I'm, I'm probably inspiring more people now. And I haven't played a lick of down. In eight, what, 2008 was my last year. It was 2008. I haven't played in over 10 years. And I'm now making headlines. Headlines because of what I believe. I'm making more of an impact for the kingdom of Yah than I've ever did in all the years when I played for the Green Bay Packers. Isn't that Yah using the weak things of the world to shame the strong? Using the foolish things of the world to shame the wise to nullify everything that he's Yah? You would think that, man, I'm playing for the Packers. Man, I'm current. People are going to want to hear about my how I had a good game. And now I'm just a civilian. Private life now. Take care of my dad. Just trying to live a peaceful life. And now you're hearing about what I believe and I haven't played one lick of down. And now I made news for a whole week. Hey! And if I did what these people told me to do, you wouldn't even hear about it. And then I start thinking about the people in the Bible. I think about Rashek, Meshek, and the Bandigo. Please forgive me if I'm messing up the names. And I'm thinking to myself, these people lived in the country. They were very important people in their country. You could say they were celebrities, but really just high officials in their country at that in the country that they were in captivity. And they were told that they had to bow down to a statue and they refused to bow down to the statue. And so then they were thrown into the fiery furnace. And then Yah actually protected them. He says, Eve, he says, God is going to, Yah is going to protect us. And even if he doesn't protect us, we still wouldn't worship your, your, your idols, your God, your, your things. We will never do it. And guess what? When he, they, they put them, even the people that threw him in fire, they got burnt up and they saw four people in the fire furnace. And then they told him to come out. And that day, the king says, this day, we're going to worship the, the Elohim, the God of Rashek, Meshach, and Abandigo. You see, they made a difference. They stood for something. They didn't follow the crowd. They stood for something. And today, in 2019, we're talking about them. Let's talk about another uh, contemporary of that time, Daniel. Daniel was told that they were told in his, he was a high official at that time too. And they were told, don't pray to anybody but the king. And Daniel had a ritual where he paid three times a day. Three times a day he prayed. And in the afternoon, he's praying like he always prayed, always praying. And what happened? He got caught praying. And then they threw him into the lion's den, put him there overnight. Nothing happened. Yah shut the mouth of the, 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 uh, the, lion, uh, the, the lion. And they got out and then they put the people that conspired and put them in the lion's den. And they got eaten up. And that day, the king says, we're going to worship the God of Daniel. Isn't that amazing? See, when you have people who stood up for something, they stood. They didn't care about the persecution, the things that came. They stood. That's why we're talking about Daniel right now in 2019. I'm talking about him. He inspired me. And that was thousands of years ago. Maybe one day they'll be talking about Brother Kabir one day that he stood for something. You remember when Kabir? All he had to do to keep his family was submit to the woman. If he would have submitted to the woman, I knew the consequences. 
Keep the Sabbath or lose my family. Keep the family and lose my relationship with the Most High. And I chose, I chose Jesus. I didn't just talk with my mouth. I, with my footwork, I showed that I love Jesus more than I love my wife. I love Jesus more than I love my sons and daughter. I love Jesus more than I love my reputation, my fame, money. I showed that I love Jesus more than anything else in the world. And I was willing. Look at all the things that people say. I went from being loved in this community and now I'm hated. I'm a crack, crack pot. Can't even say crack pot. I'm, I'm crazy. CTE, brain damage, mental breakdown. And probably this video right now is because like he's passionate because he's very animated. Because in the in the European culture, the Caucasian culture, the white culture, whatever culture you want to call it, being passionate, talking with passion is bad. You gotta talk like this. Very stiff. Well, in the news today, um, well, Kabir is crazy. Um, he has a love for this Jesus. Uh, and you, you, you can't move. I, I'm probably moving my mouth too much. I'm both, you know, Kabir today. Uh, he was in the news today. Da -da 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 -da. And, um, he is pronounced crazy. Uh, guys, what the hell? It's like white is right. I, I, I just don't understand. They want to tell me how to live my life. Who do we talk about today? They supposedly do Jesus' birthday every every December 25th. Even Yeshua. How come we know about him? Because he stood for something. All these people stood for Paul stood for something. Moshe stood for something. He went before Pharaoh. He could have said, man, man, if you go before Pharaoh, the most powerful country at that time, he went before and said, let my people go. And we talk about Moshe today in 2019. I hope maybe if, if years go by, I hope I'm not forgotten. Maybe I'm going to really be remembered. Because people don't really remember if you made it to the Hall of Fame. I made it to the Packer Hall of Fame. Are they going to really remember me? I think they will remember me now. Getting arrested. Not for being, not for crack. Not for, not for having drugs. Not for uh, killing somebody. But for standing for Jesus. It was a setup. It was a setup. They wanted me to get arrested. Make me look crazy. Well, guess what? You're right. Let me just let me help everybody out that have any questions about my sanity. I am crazy about Jesus. You're right. I'm crazy. Let's just finish it. Let's just finish it. I'm crazy about Jesus. That's it. I love Jesus. I love Jesus so much that I'm not willing to submit and bow my knees to a wicked ass woman to be able to get my sons and daughter back. The sons and daughters situation is what it is. The Bible says it in 1 Corinthians 6. They are unclean. They said it's better for the parents to stay together. The woman left and she took them. So now that makes the sons and daughters unclean. Look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Go all the way out and read. There's nothing. So no matter, people saying go. I understand people are kind hearted. Saying get psychological help. Get therapy. Get counseling. There's nothing you can do because all the counselor is going to do is to try to make you to make agreements with this woman to to compromise. And for 16 years of marriage, we did do counseling from time to time. And guess what? Every single time in 16 years, I was always wrong. Guys, I know. I know you can say you can't say always, Kabir. No, I was always wrong. Always. I'm the only one that had to adjust. Come on, Kabir. They wanted me to adjust to her emotions, feelings, and opinion. It always revolved around the woman. Always. If I'm making it up, please somebody show me. I even called counseling saying, I'm being abused by a woman. You know what they told me? They hung up the phone and told me, you ever call back here, we will call the police on you. Just focus on the family. <clears throat> they don't care about truth. The, the, the counseling session is going to be revolved around the woman. You know, you're not. Thank you. But yeah, it's around the woman. Straight up. 16 years, guys. I did it. I was a master simp. Very good. But here's what changed. I've been saying it. I've documented it on my channel. Check my channel. I had a dream. Dr. King had a dream. I had a literal dream. A vision. And I was visited, spoken by the Most High himself. It wasn't the type of dream like, oh, yeah, me and Jesus, we were walking down the street and it was so lovely. No, it was terrifying. 
I felt so little, felt so in like like insignificant. I was even I was humbled that the most high would even give me a visitation to talk to me. But I can understand why the people said, Moshe, you talk to him. It's too much for us to handle. The whole, that thing was, I mean, it, it wasn't like I was terrified. It was just, it was just like, I was, I felt so vulnerable. And what did Yah says? You do not love me. I said, no, I love you. I love you. You would be tested. That was it. It wasn't a long conversation. You don't love me. I was doing most of the time. Please, please, please. And then he says, you'll be tested. And I did not know that in the form of the Shabbat, the Sabbath day, the seventh day to rest, because that was enough to destroy my 16 years of marriage. Woman leaves conspired with the church community here. The Christian community here in Green Bay and my ex-wife literally are blocking me from having a relationship with my sons and daughter. I had a good relationship with them. Very good. I disciplined them. I played with, I did all, I did, I did with a father. They were well disciplined. They had nothing to fear. She broke that by hiding at a pastor's house for 40 days. And I was on the phone with the pastor and the whole time he never told me that my sons and daughter were at his house. And I'm driving throughout all of Wisconsin. I went up to to to, uh, to Washington Island and uh, up north. I went I went I went to to, to uh, Pewaukee. I went to I went everywhere I could think of. And and there was people that literally saw my eyes, knew that my family. They already knew that she was planning to leave. She was trying to make it look like it was going to be for a vacation. We're going to leave a few days later. People literally met up with her and prayed at an ice cream store and prayed and prayed. She lied to my sons and daughters and said, hey guys, we're going to go and prayed with them as they left. And I'm the bad guy and I'm crazy. I lost my family because of a rebellious woman and I'm crazy because I was trying, I'm trying to use the means within that I have. I try to use the constitution, try to use the Bible. None of it is working and I'm crazy. Just because I say, okay, well, if I'm going to lose something, let me at least be compensated. We live in America. If you're going to use my property, if you're going to use the, the use of my property, then I should at least be compensated. I created it. Should I not be able, um, uh, should I not be able to um, get the get the fair enjoyment use of my property? You're going to use it for public use. Just compensate. So anyway, guys. I just wanted to tell you, I am crazy. I just wanted to certify I'm crazy. So I'm going to put this on this chat on that Facebook thing to let people know to answer the question. But at least I'm standing for something. And so I don't want to be the people that just follow the crowd, stay under the radar, because then you won't be remembered. You'll be remembered for nothing. You stand for you stand for nothing. You get nothing. I'd rather stand for something and die on that. And, it's, and it is an honor to be able to be publicly uh, murdered, killed, whatever, persecuted. Uh, for Jesus. It's an honor. At least I'm standing for something and I haven't even played it down. And now it's just more about what does Kabir believe? Who is he affiliated with? Hey, hey, the bigger, well, the, the, the more you have, the more responsibility, right? And so with much, with much, with much, with much comes much responsibility. So I, I, I wear it with a badge of honor. I'm, I'm honored that Yah found me worthy, worthy, to be able to represent him on a national level, maybe on an international level. I am honored. I'm honored that I have a shepherd like Pastor Dow that is give, teaching me knowledge and understanding of the truth of the scriptures, of the word. And I have a good example in him. So I, I'm in good hands. I'm in good hands. And so as long as my family members and if, if those are the people that, that, that can that get my ears if I'm crazy. But I am crazy. I will acknowledge I am crazy for Jesus. So let's just finish it up. So if you're going to say I'm crazy, don't stop there. Now, I'm not a crackpot. Uh, I don't have CTE. And I don't have brain damage. Okay? I'm very... I, I am... I, I got all my... I, I, I'm thinking here. I got my brain here. So... But we do have rights. If anything, I think all, of, all the people that call me crazy, they're the real crazy ones because they don't know what they're talking about. So anyway... Just wanted to just bring some understanding about this whole crazy. Go check out the, uh, I think I'll put it in the uh, in the the, the information um, deal here. But please like, 
Um, please subscribe. If you have not subscribed, I'll still be putting more content out here. We're going to start a patron thing that's going to be coming out soon where I'm going to really, really like show you guys behind the scenes. I'm going to show you uh, the footage of when I was being arrested. I'm going to show you footage of things that's happened in the court. I'm going to show you guys. You guys will see it and you can see with your own. I know we should say faith, uh, 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 what does it say? Uh, believe and it says um, we walk by faith, not by sight. But I know some of you guys can't believe unless you see it. You can see it. You can see how crazy it is. You think I'm making up that the, the officer wanted to accuse me of, uh, uh, what are they going to accuse me of uh, looking at his gun and he wanted to almost arrest me for that? That's crazy. Where's the probable cause on that? And where's the warrant? <laughs> so anyway, guys, I love you. Uh, for those who are supporting me, keep keep us in your prayers. Keep my dad in your prayers. So I'm going to get in here. I think the, the, the doctor is calling me in here. So I got to get in here. I'm just sitting in a parking lot. And I just want to just, uh, just respond. I love you guys. And remember, be faithful in the little things. Shalom, shalom.